And welcome to part two of this video build log for the A1 Sky Raider. In this part, we'll be attaching the control horns to the flight controls and finishing up the assembly of the wing. Let's get started. So we've had a chance to look at the instructions and the first several steps it's just a matter of mounting the control horns onto the various control surfaces. So we've got the ailerons, um, the flaps on each wing, the rudder, and of course the elevator. And so rather than have you suffer through um, screwing on all of those, I'll just show you here on the rudder how that process is, is going to work and then I'll, I'll skip through the rest of that so you can see the, the end result. Now as I unpacked, I used a small muffin tin from the kitchen and, and separated the screws into the various sizes. The instructions uh, label those screws uh, pretty well and so I've got them into uh, uh, separate bins so I'm able to, to get them without too much trouble. Now these heavy um, control horns are uh, of a nylon type and they uh, mount in. And, and then the other part then is this flat piece that uh, is the screw plate for them. So it's pretty typical um, typical um, construction. And so let me take this one. It calls for um, a two millimeter by 30 millimeter screw. And we'll just drop that through and um, push that through. It goes through very easily. Get the other side, push that through. And then join them here on this side with the the plate uh, for them to mount into. Got those aligned now pretty well. And we'll screw those into the, the set places. Now this, this alignment is not perfect and so you don't want to cinch the first one down because you're probably going to have to work on tightening the second one a little bit when that's the case here. So we're just going to uh, Screw them in, screw the other one in tight, and that's really all there is to that part of the assembly. Now, I mentioned earlier that we we're going to be talking about some of the building tips from the, the, the groups, and this is one of those things. So I have the, the, the horizontal stabilizer in the elevator here. I'm kind of wondering if whether that got painted right or not with the bright white on the top. Um, but in any case, I'm going to go with that. And you notice that the control horn is mounted right here near the center, as you would expect. And then there's just a very, very small piece of foam that connects the left and the right half. And that's pretty firm, but if you're going to start flying and having some pulling some G's with this thing, that may not be um, the best thing. So my plan is to, on the bottom side of that, is to dig out just a small bit of foam about a millimeter wide across the top and lay in a piece of carbon fiber strip that I have uh, that's available in the hobby stores. It's very easy to get. It's about a millimeter wide, two or three millimeters thick, and it's pretty flexible if you go the flat ways, but when you've got it on end, which is what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lay about four to six inches across here to give that joint or that area between the uh, left and right half of the elevator a little extra support. Okay, now that we've got the control horns here on the uh, flap and on the aileron, let's take a couple of minutes and connect the uh, push rods and the servos to uh, using the clevises provided in the kit. Um, one of the things that I thought was really handy about the kit is that, you know, you don't know where they um, have the servo set and the servo arms are packed in the recess to avoid breakage during shipping. Uh, and so they have these uh, really handy little um, molded areas that will allow you to get a precision size screwdriver into the um, the head of the servo which would allow you then to take the servo uh, control arm off really easily here. Got that undone. Use a common screwdriver to just kind of pry that off. Comes off very easily. And then just get those two part out of the, the recesses. Set those away so we don't lose them. And we're going to do the same thing here on the aileron. And again, they've got that nice little molded uh, detent that allows the uh, screwdriver to get in there. 
So we're going to take that off. And the reason I'm doing that, of course, first you need to get them uh, up so you can connect the control horns. And then I've got my servo tester that I'm going to use here in just a moment to um, make sure that I've got the servo centered so that uh, I'll be able to put them on and not have to do a lot of messing with them after uh, I get everything connected. So again, I've got the pieces set aside so I don't lose those little screws. And so we'll be ready to go. Now, again, I'll be using a little servo tester here. If you don't have one, you can use your radio. Um, so get this uh, plugged in. And then I'm going to go to the, the, where the wires are coming out of the wing. And this long cord is going to be for the servo that is coming from the uh, flap actuator. And so again, we've got the plus and the minus and the signal. And we'll get that uh, in there. Okay, and then set the servo tester to uh, neutral. And then it runs, so the servo works. Got it centered, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna plug in the other servo. Signal that at that end. And set it to, it rotates back and forth. Got it centered, I'll unplug that. And so now just with that simple um, moment of extra planning, I'll be able to put the, um, the control arms back on the servo, just reversing what I did a moment ago, and get them perpendicular, knowing that the servo is in it. So let me put that here so you can see. Press that down in there. Rotate it to the right combination. There we go. And put the, lay the screw in the detent, come back with my little screwdriver. Get it in there. Firmly mounted. Do the same thing with the for the flap. Now the clevises are coming in with the push rods, and they looked about the same, but one is longer, and the longer one is going to go to the flap. So let's start with the flap. So the first thing we're going to want to do is just uh, put it through the hole. Now there's the hole that's for the push rod is a little bigger than the others on that arm, so it's really easy to pick the one that you want to use. Uh, and then we're going to position the flap where it would be a neutral and then just get a sense of where we are on the clevis. These are screw ends and so we're just going to extend them um, out. So this one looks like it's going to have to go around a time or two uh, to get it a little bigger and so we'll take it off the end here. And screw that. And use the pliers to hold the, uh, the, the tight end here and then we'll just screw it to make it a little bit longer. Yes, it's good. It's perfect. So we'll spread it and snap it on. And that's really all there is to, um, to getting that clevis on. Now, for those of you who have had glow models or have a buddy with glow models, you might have some of the um, fuel line that you could slide along here and use that to hold this clevis tight. You don't want it breaking or coming apart. I don't have that, and so I'm going to use some very small cable ties, zip ties if you will, uh, to zip around that and hold it tight so that these don't come apart in flight. That obviously would not be a good thing. So we're going to do the same thing here with the uh, with the aileron, there's um, one of the holes is bigger, it's the second one in. Fits right in there. We're going to hold the aileron to where it's almost neutral. Okay, this one is going to have to come in shorter by about a turn or a turn and a half. And so we'll, we'll take that, again, using the pliers, just hold that metal end and turn that in. So. Okay, we've made a couple of adjustments to get that just right because we want to avoid using radio trim to move the servo. We want to get it physically trimmed as close as we can. And then we can use the sub trims on the radio or take this apart again if after our maiden flight we end up having to uh, uh, further adjust the trim. But starting off as close as possible is always the best, um, 
the best choice. So again, we'll get those in the hole that it fits in. We're going in on the um, first hole, the top hole. And there we have it. That's really all there is to that. Now, I'm not going to put my little zip ties on here quite yet, and I'll do that after I finish up with the control throw measurements uh, when we get the radio programmed and everything together, uh, and then I'll cinch those down with the cable ties in case I need to change uh, which of the holes that I have the clevis mounted in uh, to get the desired control throws. Now, next step is going to be with the landing gear. Now, the landing gear has as you can see, is the electrical retractable gear. It's got this pin in it that goes into the main strut. Now you want to make sure that that pin is, is mounted firmly. As I mentioned earlier, mine had come out and so I took the pin, straightened it a little, just tapping on a hammer with it uh, on the concrete floor, and then tapped it in to the hole. Now the hole goes through the gear strut and so if you don't have the pin in or if it's not in very well you not only run the risk of having it fall out but you really weaken the strut because there's that big hole through the middle of what's a fairly narrow strut anyway. So you want to make sure that the pin um, is in there. And so I have the pin in there now quite nicely. So the next step then, and there's just a couple parts that I'll show you as I put them together. First there's this uh, wooden uh, uh, template kind of piece that fits over the foam to give it some strength where you're going to be mounting the, um, the gear. Next, the gear will go on. In the front, then the gear cover is going to go on. And then last is going to be the piece with these little forks on it that will go on. And that's the part that will pivot the gear. It'll catch the, that little pin that I just showed you. So that's the order in which these are going to go on. So there's four screws in the sack that came with the, uh, the landing gear parts. And so we're going to get those out and put those in right now. So we've got the part in. I'm not going to glue that down. The instructions don't call for it to be glued down. And, and the pins go, the, the screws go into plastic mounted uh, sockets here in the foam. So I'm just going to use that as a, um, as a hard surface to mount those landing gear. So I take the pin off plug the actuators in, make sure that I got the red, the black, and the white wires aligned. Got those plugged in. You may want to tape those if you so desire. I don't think they're going to go anywhere. There's a little snap. And then the gear um, connector on the extension is labeled channel 5 on the outside here. And so what I'm going to do there is just pull gently on that uh, because I'm going to want to mount the, uh, that connector down in the, the channel that that is there, uh, otherwise it's going to not fit. So I'm just going to gently push that in there. It went in just very, very easily. I've got the little wooden piece, get that ready to go in. And with that, I can place the gear into the well. I mentioned earlier that there were some things in the threads on RC groups about the landing gear. Uh, some of the people weren't happy about the strength of the gear. Others uh, commented about the, um, uh, the angle. Now the fact of the matter is, is that if you were measuring the CG using the panel line on the top wing as the instructions show, that the CG runs just right about here, uh, just a couple of centimeters behind the landing gear. Now of course with a, a tail dragger airplane, you want the CG behind. Now one of the things that some of the folks have suggested and that I'm going to do here is um, elevate the back end of this a little bit so that it tilts forward. Now if you were to get some uh, third-party gear to use in this model, uh, you might get some that say, um, you know, 110 degree gear. And what that means is instead of stopping at 90 degrees from perpendicular from the, from the retract housing, it would actually go forward about 10 degrees. And so uh, I do want that to go forward a little bit so that the wheels are just a little bit more forward. And the way I'm going to do that is uh, I'm going to use a couple of, of um, screws from a three millimeter screw that I had here in the workshop, uh, and not screws, but the bolts. And, and these bolts are about two or two and a half millimeters thick. And I'm just going to mount them in the behind here. And, and what that's going to allow me to do is to um, 
move the gear forward and I measured it um, before I put them in and it's going to move it about five degrees. Now the length of the gear is about four inches and so what that does it moves the wheels forward about about a centimeter. So instead of the wheels being um, I'll say two to three centimeters in front of the center of gravity. Now it'll be three to four centimeters, and it should help with the ground, um, the ground handling by allowing the the wheels in contact with the ground to be forward a little bit. It's going to make the the airplane a little more stable on the ground. The reports from some of the folks there on the group said it gets a little tipsy um, when you've got it just almost exactly on the center of gravity. And so while being a little tipsy might be good for your date, it's not so good for the airplane. So we're going to make sure that we get that in there. So we've got the landing gear in there. The, the way that it's going to go is the gray plywood plate, the retract on the front, the gear cover, and then on top of that will be this forked, uh, forked piece. So that's the way that that's going to fit together. So let me take a minute and screw that all down. Okay, so we've got the gear mounted. You may find it easier to retract the landing gear to get the screws tight, depending on the, the size of your screwdriver. Getting it around the tire can sometimes be a kind of a pain in the neck. I'll point out a couple of things. First, um, as you can see here with the, with the landing gear, the uh, the pin that rotates the landing gear is right there and it's going to strike this fork as it rises. The other thing I wanted to point out to you is, is some of the angles that are happening here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that, but you can see that this is the end where I put the little screw so that the back end of the gear uh, itself or the retract motor and so forth is a little bit higher than it is in the front and that allows me to get that that landing gear to lean forward a little bit. It gives me that extra centimeter or two of forward rake on that. Um, the other thing you can see is that the, the forked piece, the forked piece here is on top of the landing gear door, which is spring-loaded, which we're going to use a little piece of wire that comes separate in the kit uh, to tie it to the landing gear strut and and then tie it to the little hole on the landing gear door itself. Now I found that doing that in the retracted position is a little easier to get at it because I'm going to use uh, some um, uh, hemostats or forceps to help me uh, tie the knots with this very very thin piece of wire. But before I go and do that let me show you the landing gear as it um, opens and closes. I've got my gear tester on it. It's going to work. And so pay attention to what's happening with the pin here as uh, we open it and close or extend and retract the landing gear. Okay, so you can, so you can see there how it rotated as it, as it came up. And so now as it comes down, it'll rotate the other way to go into the um, uh, the cutout, the pan, um, pan for the landing gear that's right over here. So we'll take that down this time. And it fits in the cutout for the gear. Now one of the things that you may notice here is that the tire extends up a little bit uh, and doesn't fit as deeply into the well for the landing gear as it would if I hadn't put those little bolts right here. And so that's the trade-off. So if you want that flat and, and deeper into the well, you're going to have to leave those flat uh, because the angles change and it doesn't fit in there quite as well. So let's finish up with the last couple of items here on this wing. You'll notice that we have the rockets here and uh, if you look at them you're going to see that they're numbered. They're both right and left numbered from one to six and you can see the difference on the mounting sides here uh, is why they're numbered. So you're going to want to make sure that you keep up with the numbering so that you get them in the right in the right slots here in the wing. The other thing you'll notice is that this model has a lot of photographs of it on Google Images and uh, and in most of those the rockets are not the white color that they came molded in so I spent a little bit of time and got some uh, just some regular craft paint that you can get at the uh, Michaels or at Walmart. And this I use the dolphin gray that gives a little bit of a blue to the grayishness uh, and painted the rocket so it's got a little more uh, contrast when it's on the bottom. I'm going to use just a little bit of contact cement that I have left over from another kit and because these don't need a lot of support, there's nothing structural about them, I'm just going to put a couple little dabs of uh, a glue along just the leading 
or the top edge of each of these support pylons and then uh, insert them here. So I've got the rockets already labeled, numbered in order, so I can just work my way down the uh, down the, the, the wing. And then last but not least, we'll get this 2,000 pound bomb. At least that's what it is in most of the photographs. This one's a little fat, a little heavy, bulbous uh, in terms of the molding on the foam, but uh, the green color and the general shape would lead one to believe that that's what this is, along of course with all of the, uh, the great photos that you can see of this airplane on Google Images. So now we've got those. Next, as I'm going to pivot this around, put just a little drop of glue at the end of the wing mounted machine guns. I painted the tips of these, the gun barrel part, black as you'll see as soon as I get my hand out of the way. And just a little hint of glue. Slide those right in to the fixtures. So we've just got a couple of things left to do here on the wing. And the, the main thing is going to be installing the wing spar. And so it's that bent piece of uh, plywood that came with the kit. And it's just it's going to uh, slide into the channel here. And so we'll get that in. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, got that in there. I'm gonna, and again, get that in the channel. Make sure I've got all the wires hanging out. Um, in this case, through the top, through this channel. as we put this final bit of pressure on it to bring it together. And that's all there is to that. We've got all the wires coming out through the top uh, and the wing fits together. The little indents come together like so. So it's looking very good. Now, we're not going to glue that. We're not going to glue the spar in, nor are we going to glue the wings together. If you've read the instructions or some of the advertising about this model, it allows it to be disassembled. So if you're running it in a small car, you'll be able to take the wings apart. So you not only have uh, the wings separate from the fuselage, you can separate the wings. And then when it's on the airplane itself, there's a screw that goes through each of the wings. The last thing that we're going to end up having to do here is just put the Y connectors here on the various wires. One of the things I thought was really handy is they have this three-way um, Y connector, so I guess it's not a Y anymore, but the one that goes with the, uh, the servo tab plus the socket on this end is going to go up and that's going to go to my retract from my tail. Uh, and then these, of course, will go to the, uh, the retracts here in the wing. And then the other two will just match the uh, uh, flaps and the ailerons. And we can tell that because the flaps are the longer of the wires, the shorter is the ailerons, and then the, uh, the landing gear are labeled with a little sticker saying channel 5. So I'm going to do that and then we'll be ready um, to go on to the next step.